In the hills overlooking Smith's Beach in Yellingup, southwest WA, lies the home of Bill and Di Mitchell. Their expanse of home and garden is all about celebrating the location. We're very much in a rural beach setting, I would describe it. We can sit here and watch the surfers out on the main break. I can then have my coffee out here early morning and see that um, the water's not too crowded and there's room enough for an old fella like me to go and have a go. The Mitchells have stumbled into garden notoriety with their enchanting coastal succulent display, much to their surprise. When we started, a lot of people were interested in coming to look at the garden, all the garden groups, and we thought, oh, this is interesting. Anyway, they come and they're just so enthusiastic about it. But the joy that people, you know, they come along and they say, oh, we know nothing about these sort of plants because we've all got English gardens down here. And that's down here, mind you. You know, so it's, it's just great seeing the pleasure people get from it. It's lovely. But there is more to the story of this garden than meets the eye. Living in an extreme bushfire risk area, surrounded by national park and wooded rural properties, as well as being positioned on a slope in a windy area, has meant that fire safety has become front of mind. And what was the site like when you first started with the property? Well, it was, we had a lot of bush, but then we made some serious mistakes in that we planted picked out plants and trees that uh, were going to survive rabbits because there was millions of rabbits around here. So we planted, would you believe, uh, Rottnest Island pines that 20 years on ended up touching the house and their explosive fire uh, material. Because the bushfire wasn't an issue down here at all. In the 80s when we built, it wasn't an issue. In the 90s, it wasn't an issue till about the mid 90s. And then it became an ever increasing serious issue for the area. So that's when we started to have to clear all the stuff that we had planted to get us more fire safe. So we just cleared more and more around the house. And then years later, we just started the landscaping with the uh, fire retardant plants and the succulents and cactus. What do you mean by fire retardant plants? Fire retardant plants are, um, are plants that are, are full of water. So in fact, they don't uh, ignite they, when they intense heat, they just bubble and boil, but they don't ignite. The first uh, plants I discovered, I went on a huge discovery over several years, uh, was the aloe. And in fact, these aloes are the very first plants that were planted in 2013. These aloes produce between seven and 10,000 flowers between March and September. Hence, that's where I came up with the name Fire and Beauty. The beauty just blew me away, so I got very passionate. And now we've got 540 aloes in the garden, 26 different varieties with a whole range of colours. It's the colour show between particularly June, July in winter is just stunning. Texture, shape and colour are recurring themes throughout this garden. And the result is reminiscent of a kind of dry land coral reef. The surrounding vegetation is kept trim and with regular breaks to reduce fuel load without disturbing the feel of being surrounded by bush. In amongst the diverse displays are some standouts and all of them have a story. Well, this here is the golden barrel, better known as the mother-in-law's cushion. Uh, yes, oh, you want to try sitting on it, Josh? The interesting thing about these, they're native Mexican and you can see the cotton on the top. Well, they're full of cotton and water. And the cotton is in fact harvested and spun into yarn in Mexico. And they just shave off the uh, spikes off the top, and just dig their hand in and pull out the cotton. So and they keep growing. They keep growing, it's fantastic. They're a, a beautiful plant, but that's, that's one of my many favourites I've got in the garden. And what a feature. Yeah, beautiful. There's some lovely groupings of plants through here, really intermingling. Is there much curation involved to make it look like this? No, we just let it run. If something gets a bit shabby, we'll trim it up, but that doesn't really happen. They're time efficient plants to manage. In these areas, for example, we like to mix a lot, a lot of varieties to give the different textures and colours and form. And it just works. Most succulents are easy to propagate, and so the collection has been readily multiplied. 
Visiting enthusiasts often gift Bill and I plants as well. But there are some that have required real effort, like this 80-year-old bottle tree. We sourced this uh, from Queensland. It's uh, a native Queensland plant. It's no relation to the boab tree, because everybody that comes up here says, I love your boab. It's not a boab. Uh, boabs won't thrive, survive or thrive here. This is totally drought tolerant and apparently can grow pretty well anywhere. So this uh, did a big journey all the way from um, uh, Brisbane around the Bight to Fremantle Harbour, along with five other 20-year-old bottle trees that were in the 40-foot container. So it was a pretty big logistical exercise. Are you happy with how it's recovering from the relocation process? Yes, I am. It's, it's recovered really well. It's done everything um, that it was supposed to, so I'm very, very happy the way it's recovering. So the garden provides a buffer for the house in the event of fire. But water storage and technology underpin the fire plan. There are cameras to monitor ember attacks and a serious sprinkler system that can soak the house in minutes thanks to a half a million litres of stored water that is all captured off the hard surfaces on site. The key is that the diesel-powered water pump can be activated remotely by a mobile phone, something Bill implemented after the 2011 Margaret River fires nearby. Water catchment is a critical component of living in the bush. You just, and storage, and correct storage, and remote management. Because Walcliffe House burnt down, which is a tragedy, it's our most historic house in the area, because in that huge Margaret River fire event, the um, police blocked off the road, and the caretaker wasn't allowed in to manually start the pumps. They had everything set up. That was a perfect scenario for them to fight a fire with, but it had to be manually started. And the rest is history. It, it was lost in that, that fire, which is a tragedy. The new reality of living in an extreme fire zone area has inspired Bill and Di to research and create a fire-ready property. The unexpected bonus is that the garden has become highly regarded around the world by succulent and coastal garden enthusiasts alike. What started as a fire management um, exercise has, has turned into a seriously joyful experience for us and given us both a, a, a passion, a new passion. We've met so many different people and uh, it's been a, one of those discovery journeys.